our Blue High Squad, it's not done, there's more. Let's see what this is all about. Orgy! Oh my god! Oh my god, check this out! Completely different! <gasps> Look! Okay, this is a smell that I completely remember as a kid. Rabbits! These are massive rabbits! Look at how big- look at how big that is! That's the size of like- that's bigger than a Cocker Spaniel! These are huge! Oh my- and that smell, that rabbit smell, the urine, I- I- yeah, I recognize that very much. Oh, they're so cute! So is this how big they really get? Okay, so unlike reptiles, like we saw the tortoises, the rabbits need cold. They do better when it's cold. So this entire indoor area is like air conditioned. Oh wow, look up, but it's so big. Is this a Flemish giant? Oh, they are, they're big. No wonder, this is a Flemish giant, guys. They're huge. That doesn't even look like a rabbit to me. That looks like a mutated like rabbit. Oh, they are Flemish giants. Oh. I see. RJ, I want a Flemish giant for the farm. They're so big. I don't think I've ever seen one that big in my life. Oh, look at this lobs. Look at how its ears are, they, they flop down. Look at that. Adorable. Now, I had rabbits as a kid, but my mom gave them to my Italian neighbors who killed them for us, and then we ate them in adobo. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, baby rabbits are called kids? Yeah. Oh. Look at the babies. They're so tiny and cute. This is a, called a chinchilla. American chinchilla. Oh, mom is getting protected. Oh, look at you. You're so cute. There's mommy. Look at the baby bunny lops. How adorable. Yes. Go back to mom. <laughs> Mabuhay squad, by the way, if you're new to the vlogs, my name is Mikey Bustos. We are here at Congo Charlie. It's a breeding facility for animals. We Yesterday's vlog, go check it out. We were looking at tortoises. And now he took us to this section where they're selling rabbits. I'm dying. They're so adorable. I just want to squeeze and cuddle them all. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this vlog. And subscribe to join the Mabuhai Squad. We'll be your daily dose of positive vibes. Yes, like these bunnies here. So cute. Wow. They're nice, right? It's the urine that smells. So RJ, we're, look at all these prizes they won for their, their bunnies. Best of breed. Best of breed, Himalayan. Best French law. Best opposite of breed, Flemish giant. Best in show. Wow. So they have rabbit shows too, I guess. Rabbit con. Rabbit, rabbit con Philippines. So RJ, if we do get a bunny, it cannot live outside. Here in the Philippines where we live. It's too hot. They need, they need air conditioning. It's gotta be indoors. Oh, what's here? Oh, more bunnies. Small breed. I see. Like Himalayans and stuff? I see. Mini Rex. Oh. Mini Rex. They're cute. We have the standard Rex and the Mini Rex. Oh, Mini Rex? So there's a small kind. Yes, this is, oh. this is the Mini Rex. Are they full grown? Yes. Oh, this is full grown. So I didn't know they had Mini Rex. If you want to try some field in prayer? RJ, go. Okay. How does it feel? Soft. Yeah. Oh, it's oh my gosh, it's so soft and dense. And this is full grown already? Oh, it stays bunny sized. That's different. Actually, the history of this breed, uh, people in Europe with the skins in the fur, uh, they used to make a coat out of it. I see, it's used to make coats, but obviously these are sold as pets. Oh my. We have all kinds of rabbits here. Wow. Okay, yeah, see, this is the normal size. This is how big I thought they grew. And this one. Oh, look at the babies, the kids. They're so cute. They got little tiny ears. This was my very first rabbit, a Himalayan. I got it, my dad bought it for me for Christmas. Oh, and rabbits are smart, are they not? They're very intelligent. You can like interact and play with them. They learn to play tag and stuff. They know, they know. Awesome. And aren't they partially uh, litter trainable? You can train them to go in like a tray, more or less. And they do have these crazy moments where they like want to hop around. Wow. Oh my gosh, RJ, this makes me want to have bunnies now. Oh, Melvin, this one is adorable. What is this one? This look at one its ears. It's called a dwarf hoto. A dwarf hoto. Oh my gosh. And look, its ears are naturally small like this? Yes. 
Oh, it's so cute. It's like the opposite of a lops. I like that. It's like a cartoon. Oh, adorable. I like these ones too. They look like almost like chinchilla ish. Look at, see? The ears are so tiny. They're bred that way. I didn't know they had this kind. Oh, look at this one. Is this lion head or something? Lion head. Okay, these are lion head. See? Lion heads have really thick fur. You can already see their eyes. They're so hairy. RJ, what's your favorite kind? The first one. The Flemish giant? Yeah. Yeah, they're really big. They're cute. Guys, this is Mac hey, from hey, Reptilab. Hey. Yes, hi Mac. Hello. You have bunnies too, right? Well, we did get some bunnies. Oh, nice. Not his feeders. No, not his feeders. <laughs> he, got, he got bunnies from Melvin here. Wow, amazing. The kits are so cute. Look at them. Like, they can hardly move around. Oh. Melvin, do rabbits need booster shots too? For like rabies or no? No need, okay. They need vitamin C. Vitamin C is very vital. Vitamin C, ah. Because they cannot produce it themselves. Yes. They need it like dietary. Okay. Nice, right? Rabbits are beautiful. They're such beautiful animals. But a Flemish giant, <laughs> I like the size of a medium sized dog. Melvin, what's the average lifespan of a Flemish giant? Six years. So here are turtle pens. Yesterday we saw the tortoises, but here they have turtles. He's gonna pick one out, Melvin. Oh, wow. Oh, long neck. Oh, they've got long necks. Oops. There he goes. Oh my gosh. Turtles? This turtle's fast. This one breaks the stereotype. Yeah, it's like a long head. A long neck. I guess they live on the bottom, right? And they stretch to, to breathe. Oh, that's a great adaptation. They don't need to swim to the top of the surface to breathe. Wow, it looks like a snake. And what species is this? Oh, this is the snakehead. Snakehead turtles. Yeah. It does look like a snake. How interesting. In case you missed yesterday's vlog, the guy has come with us. Yeah. She loves these trips. All these pens here contain like lizards. Oh my gosh, we're gonna go see them now. <gasps> All you animal lovers of this channel, you have a double treat of animals today. Oh my gosh, is this a blue I green iguana? Blue. Wow, guys. This is a green iguana, but high blue. See it? It's like a blue green. Oh, gorgeous. And is this female? Yes. It's a female. See that? Look at how big of an enclosure iguanas need. They seriously need space. RJ, we should get an iguana. We'll get everything. Yeah, we can get an iguana because they are strictly vegetarian and won't attack Ligaya. Oh, wow. Wow, look at these pens. They're all massive. And they're getting some really good sunlight too. Here are one-year-old green iguanas but again blue face wow they're really very blue they're like a beautiful cyan color awesome these here are newly hatched see that wow 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 awesome guys these are year old red green iguanas like high in the red color interesting oops Wow, they're quite fast. Oh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, and they're they're pretty afraid of people. Oh my! Oh. You see, this is a male blue. Male blue. Oh, he's displaying. This is a female albino. There's a female albino. Oh, that's uh, an albino. Well, right now the male is trying to protect the female. He's protecting her. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I I know that stance. Oh my gosh! So when they extend their dewlap like that, you know that flap under their neck. That's a defense display, or like he's trying to scare him. See, and they, they inflate their trunk, see, to make him look bigger. Okay, he just chickened out. He, he ain't gonna protect the female no more, but he's keeping an eye on her. Oh, wow, the female's gorgeous. They're trying to mix genetics. So, an albino mixed with a blue. And what will the babies look like? Enchanted blue? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Enchanted blue and an and albino head. Oh, so they'll carry the albino gene. Wow, genetics is such an interesting thing. Look at the setup, guys. They can turn on the hose and it can rain inside. Yeah, the guy keeps flying onto Melvin. <laughs> she likes you. Wow. What's it called? Black monitor lizard? Black tree monitor. Black tree monitor from Indonesia. Wow, look at this one. What kind is this? Varanus doramus. Oh, beautiful color. It's really, it's afraid of us though. <laughs> I would not keep any of these like larger <laughs> monitor lizards because of Ligaya, but they're still awesome lizards. Monitors, well, 
a lot of the monitors are obligate carnivores, but some are omnivorous and some even herbivorous. Tegu, that's a red tegu, they get massive. Wow, the longest monitor lizard in the world, the croc monitor. Are really like even longer, bigger than a Komodo? Yes. Really? I think the Komodo is the biggest, but this one is the longest. Oh, the longest. Oh, so they get really long then. You see the tail? Wow. Oh yeah, it is long. And there he goes. All right, we're here to see something else. Oh wow, they're huge. <laughs> the guy, look how big they are. Koi. Sweet. Now, koi are definitely something I've dreamed to have. Um, and the Mabuhai Squad Farm, Phase B, like the backyard portion, once it's built, we'll have a, uh, a big pond, like a reserve of water in the back. So I was thinking maybe we could keep koi back there. Sweet. Look at how beautiful they are. They're so relaxing to watch. RJ, do you like them? They're quite large. They're very peaceful. Remember the koi in Japan? <laughs> nice to look at. Wow, they just have tons of these koi all around. This one is massive! Wow, that's like a small shark. A very popular pet in the Philippines. We've got pigeons here. Look at how cute this pigeon is, but it's sleepy. You're so cute. And you look hot. You warm there? What an interesting shaped head. It's like a velociraptor shaped head. Wow, this is a drained koi pond. They're draining it and I guess they'll fill it eventually. Wow, sweet. Guys, this is their hatchery for the tortoises. Oh my goodness. That's for the red foot, yellow foot. Red foot and yellow foot and tortoise. Elongata. And elongata. What? We got one over here. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny. You have to watch out where you step. Look at how tiny that is. So cute. Now I understand at this age they're a bit delicate. Wow. Congrats, little guy. Welcome to the world. Oh my gosh. Guys, look at this. Underneath it, it that looks like a pumping heart. What is that? Is that its stomach? Um, actually, it's, uh, oh my gosh. I think they absorb the egg sac. Oh, it's like the yolk. Interesting. So they still have a yolk that they like subsist on in their beginning stages of life. Interesting. I did not know that. Look at it. It looks like a beating heart. This one still have bigger ones. Oh, wow. It's like the tortoise belly button. Wow, they're outies. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that. So when they hatch, they still have remnants of the yolk. I see. Guys, if you didn't see yesterday's vlog of the tortoises that they have here at Congo Charlie, you guys must check that out after this vlog. It's it's mind-blowing. Yeah, and <laughs> this tortoise is following RJ because of his shoes. They love things that are red and yellow and essentially the color of flowers because they eat flowers. Go! Eat RJ's toes! Go! They're salty! <laughs> <laughs> and look, they're so friendly, the tortoises. This is Pagong heaven. Yeah, it's tortoise heaven, yes. These are Aldabras? Yeah. Yeah, they're Aldabras. This is the kind RJ wants. Hi, Bruce. How's it going? This is Bess. We are definitely going to get a baby Aldabra, guys. But look, they need to wade. Wade in the water. <laughs> it seems like tortoises are more portable, too. Like, if we travel, it doesn't seem like... They're very hard to transport. These tortoises are small. They're a small species. Full grown. See them? They're called Elangara. Look at this one. Totally using the drip system. Wow, guys, this tortoise is a mutation. It's like a deformity. It doesn't have nails. It's just like stumps. Interesting. I would love a tortoise with like imperfections like that. It makes them unique. And he says it doesn't affect the tortoise's life. It can get around, it can breed still. How interesting. Guys, look at these mata mata turtles. It's supposed to look like dead leaves on the bottom of like a pond or a river. That's some great camouflage. Oh, wow. Yeah, what an interesting creature. Look at its face. So, so wide na camouflage sila sa leaf. sila Wow, interesting. Um, Kuya Kim has a big one like this. The Gaia loves Melvin. <laughs> hey, she, she flew back to me. Oh, no wonder she flew back to me. My boys gotta check this out. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is a bear cat, guys. Oh, it's part of the civet family. OMG. Wow, oh, there's two. 
They're four? Oh you, my, they're big. You try to smell. Yeah, the, it's my. It's like. It's like popcorn? Yeah, yeah, their poo smells like popcorn. Interesting. Kind of like a dog's paws. What an interesting animal. It's like. Well, I guess this is part of the raccoon family or the. Or the weasel family. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Does it love me or did it try to attack me just now? Oh, that's so tame. Oh my. They're native to South and Southeast Asia, these creatures. Guys, more bunnies. These are Angoras. I used to want one as a kid. And apparently in order for them to breed, you have to shave their hair because they won't otherwise. They're not a naturally occurring breed of rabbit. Oh, this one in particular is very friendly. It likes to be pet. Oh, so cute. Mm -hmm. See, they're so gentle and they love interaction these bunnies oh okay so what we've learned so far in this trip is we're getting an aldabra tortoise a green iguana possibly blue face and a flemish giant rabbit <laughs> look at these malayan box turtles guys they're adorable they eat everything they're eating all the leaves that fall and they seem really comfortable in this like algae filled water oh here they come this food. Oh, so they eat a pelleted diet. Look at them. They're so cute. They aren't harmed, Melvin, by like the algae. They like it. Oh, the water cannot be clean. I see. Okay, they need the bacteria and the algae. I guess to eat up all the like toxic nitrogenous waste, like ammonia and stuff from their from their poo. Oh, and there's some eggs. I mean, they're breed. They're healthy enough to be breeding. Like in the wild, water like this, full of algae, is very natural. I mean, as like aquarists, aquarium people, obviously we hate algae, but. It's a very important element to uh, to like wild bodies of water. Oh, okay. So now we're going to see a Philippine pond turtle. Oh, here they are. Apparently, they're the rarest turtle in the world. And you guys are breeding them. This is like a rehabilitation project. Oh my gosh, they're so cute and it's coming up to us. I don't have food for you, little one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, this is going to bite my finger off. <laughs> There's another one right there looking for food. Oh, here they all come. Wow, you guys are the rarest turtle in the world. What's it trying to do? Is it gonna bite me? My socks? Oh my gosh, yes! Oh my gosh, they're chasing my sock. Oh my god, this turtle's fast! Okay, wait, I'm just kind of scared. Ah! Ate Elsie, they're going after your toes. Ah, because of her toenails. So when you have turtles, they learn to associate certain colors with foods. See, like yellows. Right now it's eating a small mango. Interesting. Incredible. <laughs> Amazing to know that places like this are breeding rare animals to keep them alive. You know what I mean? He's saying that, see, if you look at the water, it's not completely clear. Leaves fall naturally into the water. That's right, because dead leaves actually release tannins and stuff in the water, which are, are healthy for the animals that live in the water. Creates black water, as aquarists call. They're fighting for the mango. Wow, they eat skin and all. Share a little bit. <laughs> wow, this is so cool. Cool and crazy. They're just so cute. You guys are so cute. Guys, this place just goes on and on. More koi. Wow. What a heaven for those who love koi and reptiles and rabbits. Interesting. Even freshwater stingrays. Sweet. Oh, this is like a, what's it called? Aratilis. Aratilis. It's like a local cherry. A wild berry. Oh, you're eating it too? RJ, go eat one. Yeah, I already had it in Palau. I'm afraid to eat wild berries. It's something, like growing up in Canada, we were taught not to eat wild berries. But, I mean, I guess if everyone else is eating them, try one. They're sweet? Yeah. I'm gonna try one. Yeah. <laughs> It's sweet, right? Mmm! Oh my god! Mmm! Is this your first time? Yes! Oh my gosh, that is so sweet! I've been trying to tell you... Oh my god, but it's not just sweet, it's like... You know sugar sweet? It tastes like a sugar! Like a sugar ball! Like table sugar! Oh my gosh! Like it's not sour at all! Mmm! And it's like cotton candy with like a hint of like butter! It's like buttery sweet. Oh my gosh, that is the... I think that might be my most favorite berry <laughs> I've ever had in my oh life. Wow. Okay, no, I'm not gonna try an orange one. I'm sure it's sour. No, it's the same. N Lies. No, don't do that. Why? Even this one is my favorite. Even this one. I want another one. Over here. It's like, you know, it's like icing sugar. You know what I mean? Like, it tastes like buttery, not sour, not tart. Oops. Oops. I'm gonna have another one, guys. 
That is the most tastiest berry I've ever had. What's it called? Arateris. Arateris. In local language, that's what it's called. I want another one. Or maybe it's just sweet because it's being fed by you. <laughs> that too. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. 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 Mm. And it's got a little so it's it's got a little bit of grit inside. I don't know what it is. I don't know if those are like microscopic seeds. Mm -hmm. But wow. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, you know what it's like? It's like a persimmon. Mmm. It tastes like persimmons. Like a ripe persimmon. Mmm. It is so tasty. I'm addicted to this now. You need about kids. We used to find this. <laughs> Sarap! As in super. Oh my gosh, I love it. Give me another really sweet one. It has to be like really, really red. The Gaia you want? No. It's a treat. I'm gonna be allowed to eat it. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. It's like persimmons. That's the closest fruit it tastes like to me. Guys, you know my tastes, right? I have, I have, I have a very sensitive tongue. Mmm. Mac, now we're talking. He said we should make what? Arateris cheesecake. <laughs> yes! Arateris cheesecake. I would totally eat that. And Arateris ice cream. Mmm. OMG, you guys, they have ducks too. Do you have mandarin ducks? <gasps> RJ, where's RJ? RJ, they have mandarin ducks, the kind you like. Okay, let's go see them. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful they are. <gasps> guys, the wood duck? Oh my gosh, look at the wood duck. Where? Oh, there. Oh my gosh, mandarin ducks on the other side. Look at it, guys, look at how beautiful these fancy ducks are. Look, 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 look. Just gorgeous, right? RJ and I saw them at Central Park in New York and we fell in love. I'm like, we need to get them for the farm. Oh, wow. Melvin, so if you if we keep fancy like ducks like this, like wood ducks, do they need a pen or can we just let them kind of loose on the property? You cannot, you cannot let them loose on the property uh, because they, they can fly. Oh, they can fly away. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you want to keep them, that you need to pin the wings. Ah, uh, I see. So they fly. Uh, pin the wings yeah. or clip? Pin. Oh. Pin. Um, pin other the term wings. is they call it pinion. Pinion. Oh, so to they, break them off. Yeah. So they they won't they won't fly. Oh, so sad. Yeah. And then. And then actually, uh, you need uh, if you want to keep them in captivity also. Yeah. Uh, you something also like need this. Uh, something like this because mm. they need natural sunlight. Ah, uh, okay, so they need light sunlight just like the guy does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, and obviously a water somewhere to to swim and like this. Yeah. And also, wow. one of, if you want to start breeding them, okay. if you want to start breeding them, you need to build something like this. Oh, that's different. It's like they need to go up. They oh, go up. they nest it, like higher. They nest inside. It's, not, it's completely different, you see? I see. Here, yeah, like then the geese. These geese can just lay here. They'll lay anywhere on the ground. These guys over here, they need to go up Ah, uh, I see. Uh, they have eggs inside. Oh, wow, look at the nest. Oh, I see them. Hey. Amazing eggs. So, uh, are they called wood ducks because they lay in like hollows of trees, like yes. wood? Oh, it makes sense. So this is basically a simulation of like where they would lay in the wild. Oh. And I understand that, into, according to Chinese feng shui, getting a pair of like mandarin ducks isn't it like auspicious for couples? It's like a it helps promote apparently like longevity in your romance life. Like married couples, Chinese couples sometimes will get mandarin ducks so that they'll have a long, long relationship. It's a symbol of fidelity because apparently they like pair for life. I don't know. RJ, are we going to get mandarin ducks too? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> OMG guys, my boy squad, do you see that? Do you see that? All you Ants Canada fans, that is a weaver ant nest. You see it? Ecophila smaragdina. They, they glue leaves together using silk from their larvae into big nests like that. Oh my gosh, I want one for the Ants Canada channel. <gasps> wow, just awesome. Towards Australia, the, the ants are bright green. But here in Southeast Asia, they're more like orange, but the queens can be bright green. Isn't that nice? Wow. For sure there's a queen in there, because I don't see any satellite nests. Oh, there, there's a satellite nest. But no, for sure she's in the main nest. They're right there. Awesome. Oh, sweet. Guinea pigs, how cute. Adorable. Oh, they're so cute. They're like little Pikachus. <laughs> so cute. You see this guy here? You breed guinea pigs to- Oh, skinny pigs! <laughs> They're hairless guinea pigs. Oh, they look strange. 
Yeah, they look like a baby hippo. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, we won't hurt you. So we're looking at the hatchling tortoises now. Look at how unique this one is. Can I see that one, Melvin? Look, it's got like a, an indent or a line. It's like it in the shell, it like had floss wrapped around it or something. So unique. And what we've been talking about well, is with high. tortoises, the more perfectly shaped and like symmetrical they are, the more expensive they are. But for Melvin, he was saying the more unique they are, the better it is for him. So often these class B or class C animals, which may not be the most expensive and not the most perfect, are actually kind of unique. And they're probably, depending on how you see it, more, more valuable. RJ, would you want a perfectly symmetrical tortoise or a unique tortoise? Unique. Unique. <laughs> They're so adorable. For instance, this tortoise has extra, what are these scales? Scutes. Extra scutes. Like these four don't usually exist on a Sokara tortoise. Oh, but they, yeah, you're right. It's unique. And it's like, it makes it one of a kind. Beauty in the imperfections. I don't apply to that. OMG. Oh my. Oh boy, Squad. You won't believe what we're looking at right now. Check it out.